Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, once again, I have the unsurpassed glory of associating myself intimately with this very important motion. I think my colleagues who spoke before me have accentuated the importance of that significant intervention. Mr. Speaker, just to provide a ready compass in which to set my course for my brief intervention, I want to return to the motion. He said, be it resolved that Parliament, by affirmative resolution, approves the draft value-added tax amendment of Schedules 1 and 3 order, which amends Schedule 1 and 3 of the Act to include zero-rated zero rated goods, and of course, for a period of two years commencing from the second day of August 2023 and ending on the first day of August 2025 a supply of goods which are itemized in the resolution and comprises a range of construction materials, including lumber, cement, galvanized steel, and plywood. Two, for a period of two years, commencing from the second day of August 2023 and ending on the 1st of August 2025, a supply of goods which are itemized in the resolution and supports the government's policy to promote the renewable energy sector. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance has announced a waiver of the value added tax on selected building materials that I just alluded to. And the waiver of the value added tax is to be applied to very important items, lumber, plywood, steel, cement, and galvanize. These concessions are to apply for a two-year period, Mr. Speaker. And, of course, as the member for Denry South said, it will result in a 12.5% reduction so that we can encourage persons who currently do not participate in the construction activity to participate. And having again accentuated those benefits, to the people of the country, Mr. Speaker, I am asking proud to expedite title to the people of Pom, Black Bay, and Oje so that they can commence the construction within that period because they are in the orbit of proud with a certain degree of alacrity. And if we expedite giving those people title to the land, we will experience a housing and a construction boom in our constituency. And so I think the relevant authorities are hearing me, and I believe it is incumbent upon us to ensure that this happens. Mr. Speaker, the other aspect I want to, of course, accentuate is that of the renewable sector to provide a waiver of value-added tax on a supply of components of photovoltaic systems intending solely for harnessing solar power. St. Lucia has been engaged in developing its energy transition strategy, <coughs> which involves shifting towards renewable energy and reducing fossil fuel energy sources. The renewable energy sources identified include solar PV, wind and geothermal. This resolution will provide a waiver of that on items required for harnessing so solar power and support St. Lucia's energy transition strategy. The effective date for the waiver of the VAT is from the 2nd of August 2023 to 1st August 2025. Mr. Speaker, we need to diversify our energy supply options so that we reduce the overall cost of energy in this country and attract more manufacturing so that at least the manufacturing sector could provide more jobs for the people of this country, especially our women. And if you check globally, Mr. Speaker, you'll find that more women are involved in the manufacturing sector. Again, putting a dent on the unemployment situation that exists 
in this country, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, like the member for Mikunov said, at this particular point in time, it is not just looking at lumber, steel, and plywood and cement in isolation to all the other interventions by this government. The payment of English and math, facilitation fees, STEP program, NICE program, all sorts of programs, the youth economy, the small business sector, all conspiring to create economic activity and for us to expedite the recovery of this economy in this very difficult period. Mr. Speaker, government has subsidized cooking gas and other fuel in this country to ensure that we keep prices at a reasonable level, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, this in itself is not an isolated intervention, but an intervention that will complement others to ensure that this Minister for Finance preside over the orderly recovery of the economy of this country. So, Mr. Speaker, I think my colleagues have made the point in terms of the benefits, and there's no need for me to venture along such lines. And so I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to make that brief intervention, and I now yield the floor.